good evening good evening and welcome to day 3 of the career in intellectual property rights workshop so great to have you here on day 3 uh, the last two days we've had two excellent sessions by dr anindya sarkar he touched upon actually many many different job roles from licensing to audit to technology transfer uh, to in house counsel uh, you know patent agent and he also answered a lot of questions in a very very technical and precise manner so i hope uh, you have you are better off uh, you know your knowledge is better off in the last uh, two days so today Uh, my job is to share my own experiences uh, in the field of patent analytics in the field of patent research and uh, also in india it's a rather big business it's a big offshoring business many global companies give projects to indian companies uh, to build patent landscape reports patent uh, analytics reports and so on so uh, uh, we'll have an in interactive session uh, i have some slides uh, but i will keep checking the chat from time to time and uh, yeah let's get started with the session so uh, before uh, you know i uh, before we begin i want to ask you a question so so that i can also see that uh, responses are coming in the chat and also i know that everything is working technically well you can hear me you can see me uh, so my question is uh, what is a patent okay please respond on the chat what is a patent okay uh, you know don't search <laughs> like in google or chat gpt uh, just whatever your understanding is about patents just write on the chat what is a patent so uh, uh, many things that we discuss in respect to patents today can be extended towards ipr in general but in principle today's workshop is you know i am going to use ipr and patents in a synonymous way so mostly it's focused towards patents so i've written the question in the chat also what is a patent so i'll wait for a few responses and uh, then we are going to begin the uh, the session all right uh, we already have a response uh, professor vishal lingole thank you for the answer it is the ownership of your idea all right uh, all right uh, it's a decent articulation of the overall concept so so actually yeah it's a property right right it's an ipr so intellectual property right property how do you know how do you feel about property property is you know like if you think about physical property uh, you have a house it has a certain dimensions and you own that those dimensions okay somebody comes into that property uh, they might be infringing so you have the you know legal rights against someone coming an official right all right very very succinct thank you uh, gunasimian rethiman uh, rethinam thank you what is a patent the gives the owner a legal right to exclude from others for making using and selling an invention for a limited period uh, sonu moral i loved the accuracy of your uh definition i liked that at the end you put the words limited period okay and that is a very important aspect and that is what i will cover today because if you think about patent research and analytics the first very important thing about this field is that you should understand patents very very well you should understand the patent system very well you should understand why big companies in the world they are having exponential growth in their patent portfolios okay why there is a demand if you show some charts today about global patenting that why there is so much demand for patents okay so if you don't understand that you don't know what patents measure then it's difficult for you to draw business insights from a suppose uh, in in the patent analytics field because patents uh, patent analytics is very closely related to the business domain Uh, in which we are working uh, so i'm going to show you some examples today and uh, we are going to continue with the session so any more answers are welcome for this question what is a patent meanwhile i'll pull up my slides and if there are new answers uh, we are going to discuss about it i'm also obviously going to give you uh, my own uh, my own definition of uh, what is a patent 
So uh, that's the slides. Let's move on. So typical jobs. Let me you know get this out of the way. Uh, so typical jobs in the patent industry. If you look at India, <clears throat> consulting firms. A lot of consulting firms are there who basically advise uh, uh, companies on strategies how they can patent, how they should go about things, and also they create reports and landscapes and do business intelligence related work related to technologies. So those are the domain of consulting firms. Uh, there are loads of consulting firms in India. Even many have spoken on Turnip platform. Arctic Invent is one of them. Law firms are there. You know, India has some great lawyers, some great talent. Actually, if you think about India, we have a great pool of talent in IPR, uh, from lawyers to patent agents to you know even non-technical expertise that people have. Uh, there is no shortage of talent, and <clears throat> the demand uh, is coming from. Uh, foreign companies a lot. A lot of these biggest law firms they have big contracts with uh, companies abroad, but it is also growing internally the demand. So law firms we all know uh, many law firms are there. Lex Orbis is there. Uh, Anand and Anand is there, and uh, you know many are there. I mean if you search law firms in India on Google or ChatGPT, you'll get like great responses. <clears throat> So welcome everybody. Hello, uh, I see. Uh, okay, Dr. Ashikesh, welcome. Uh, welcome everybody who's joining now. So we are in the very first slide. So let's you know see what are the job opportunities uh, in India. Uh, patent office examiners, of course, uh, there is a demand for examiners as the number of patent filings rise in India. There is patent office examiners. There are software firms actually turn up. Uh, we ourselves uh, are one of them. Uh, we have exited that business. Uh, we built IPgram, so we built patent software. You know, you can automate patent analytics. <clears throat> uh, obviously, there are corporate councils. They're in-house, so big companies who have like a lot of patent filing every year. They have in-house patent agents, patent consultants working full time only for that big company, for example, and they advise. So they have lawyers who advise them on how to mature ideas into inventions. They have an internal process, how they qualify inventions, uh, how they move the inventions forward, and how they eventually get them patented. And finally, in India, there are a lot of freelancers. So if you were to file a patent in India, there are really good freelancers, really good patent agents who you can avail their services without the overheads of the law firms, for example. So they will work for you for you know much less overhead uh, than you know. Uh, a law firm. So these are the typical domains in which you can likely find work. Uh, but today we are only interested in consulting firms. So basically, patent research and analytics. Obviously, consulting can be done by law firms also, software firms. We also did consulting. So obviously, consulting can be done in every function. But this is what we are going to focus on. Uh, Jack Sparrow, what is standard essential patents? Uh, Standard essential patents. Uh, right now, it's not the you know appropriate time to cover this. I'll cover it at some point <clears throat> in in the lecture. So please hang on. And uh, at the end of the course, I'll also show you uh, about my two week patent course, which has got AICT approval now, and it covers very well these concepts of standard essential patents and you know the motives and strategies of companies to file patents and so on. Uh, so yeah, let's move on. So to the question that I asked, what is a patent? Uh, this is my response. So patents are a reward given to the inventors. Basically, it's the reward is given by the state, by the government, in the form of a temporary monopoly. So somebody said limited period. I like that because it's a temporary monopoly. Why temporary? Because the protection term is usually 20 years. OK, so beyond that 20 years, the, the invention comes in public domain. And basically, the society is well off. The society is better off because now they've got the invention and they can use it uh, you know, to, uh, to achieve societal goals, basically societal welfare. OK, and inventors, they benefit from temporary economic monopoly. So within these 20 years, the inventors have the right to you know, exclude others, as they pointed out. Uh, Sonu Moral, he pointed out, to exclude others <clears throat> from making, using, selling, even importing and exporting, uh, you know, uh, you can add to that an invention for a limited period of time. And that is 20 years. OK, so within that 20 years, they can do premium pricing because there are no other competitors in the market. You can, you know, have monopoly. So my follow on question is, why give this monopoly? We've all, you know, 
studied in e economics that monopolies are bad, right? Uh, monopolies leads to <coughs> uh, these called so-called dead weight losses uh, in the society. Uh, that you know, one person is basically grabbing all the riches. <coughs> so why you are giving this monopoly? So why you know what? <coughs> Uh, why we should give this? Why the government is giving the inventors this monopoly when we know from economic theory that this is not the case? Uh, I mean, this is not good for the welfare of the state. So let's see the answers before we continue. So good evening, everyone. Sri Rohita, Ankita, Ankit Gupta, sorry, uh, Mr. Sujit Mishra. Good evening, Santosh Sarode. Uh, Jack Sparrow, Rashikesh, Sonu Mural. So great, great to have you everyone. Have everyone over here. Um, so standard essential patents, uh, Jack Sparrow. <laughs> you know, I suggest that you write this on ChatGPT and ask you. You know, these kind of questions, you have to you know go along with the conversation. You know, it's this is not about you know writing some question just for the sake of it. So you have to go along with the context that we are discussing. Uh, I get a lot of these kind of questions where basically some students, they probably want to test the knowledge of the instructor or something. Uh, so there's nobody stopping you to learn about it. Okay. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Bala Sangar. Uh, great. Uh, so any responses? Why give temporary monopoly? Uh, why give monopoly at all? Good evening, Dr. Amrut. Welcome, everyone. So great to have you know 56 people at least who are live right now. So amazing. Someshwar Rao, good evening. Welcome. So the question is, why give a monopoly to inventors? And it's not just monopoly to inventors, right? It's a very big company also can file a patent. So whoever is the owner of the patent, they get a monopoly. Good evening, Ikramul Haq. Great to have you. Poona Ranganathan. Welcome. All right. So I'll move forward and we'll discuss about the uh, uh, we'll discuss about uh, if someone responds. Uh, okay, Siddharth, uh, you have this answer. Uh, to reward and appreciate the work, research done by inventors, and time invested to develop the invention. Well done. Excellent. To incentivize the in innovator. So, uh, in the slide, I've uh, mentioned the temporary monopoly is basically why you're giving a monopoly so that you can boost innovation. Okay, so you take some and you lose some. You're losing something, right? When you give a monopoly, we know from economic theory, it's not good. But you have to give something to get something. So it's to incentivize research. Because research can be very long. You know, it can take tens of years for the fruits of research uh, to uh, for research to mature and for the inventor to actually, uh, you know, find the light at the end of the tunnel. So that's what patent uh, can be uh, th thought about. And there's one more thing. There's one more thing why you know they are, this monopoly is given. Okay, so the inventor gets this incentive, but they also have to disclose their innovation. So patent data is public, and that's how uh, the field of patent research and analytics really exists. And uh, uh, and, and yeah, that's why we are all here. Uh, that's why you know we are here in the session. Uh, so yeah, actually in the backstage we have Dr. Anindya Sarkar also. So maybe during Q and A uh, we can uh, also have him in the session so that we can answer it jointly. Uh, all right. So regarding standard essential patents, maybe Sir can also uh, you know uh, give a better response. Uh, so everyone has written incentive to the innovator, but is also the disclosure gives a lot of boost to the society because when you patent something you are forced to disclose your innovation and once you disclose your innovation it's there in the public anyone can learn and improve upon it so if it's in force maybe you cannot copy it and create the same say, uh, same product but you can learn you can improve upon it show that you've you know have enough in, in inventive step and you know make follow on patents for example so this is the idea behind a patent and this 
part is very important for patent research and analysts because if you don't have a very good understanding of what patents measure you will not be able to apply it in a business scenario you know why there is so big demand uh, for example for patents so uh, coming to the demand look uh, look at these charts these are a bit old charts china is a breakaway you can see uh, more than 1 and 1/2 million patents they are filing every year Uh, but even other country you can see there is a steady growth in the demand since this 40 years data and uh, by the way innovation if you see the gdp numbers of a country and the patent filing trend of a country there will be a big correlation you can see even japanese patenting has reduced and that is being shown also in their uh, e- economy since the year 2000 they have had a slightly negative growth so uh, this is why there is such a push by the government the government knows that you know if you promote innovation innovation is closely linked to economic growth because that's how wealth is created you innovate something create something new and you know you hit the market and that's how uh, you are able to create wealth and that is why we are we are here <clears throat> so many patent related courses are happening so many workshops are happening that's because of uh, this is the reason to save the environment thank you professor uh, so yeah another reason why you know ip is getting so i think sir mentioned also yesterday 80% of the value actually the latest numbers are a bit more even 90% of the value uh, the latest uh, data from ocean tomo so this is ocean tomo data they do that every 5 years or so so 2023 data they have shown if you extrapolate this chart so for so you can say s&p 500 companies which are you can assume the biggest 500 companies in the world 90% of their market value is intangible assets okay this intangible asset may not exactly be ipr uh, it can be their data it can be their secrets uh, that they have but imagine how important ip is and uh, there are case studies where biggest companies they are able they are fighting tooth and nail to protect their brand images you know they have so important you know even we were sent letters by facebook by meta incorporated from california <clears throat> because ipgram our product was resembling their brand name instagram so we got these letters from facebook they were not sent by facebook they were sent by some of the top law firms in south bombay who were representing their client in california and they sent us so imagine even we were not a even a well known name we were a very very small player a team of five people and uh, they were able to find uh, they are frequently searching for patent uh, and a uh, trademark databases to see if somebody is infringing upon their uh, right so this is how important it is for the biggest companies in the world to protect their brand names uh, so uh, i'm going to tell you in this slide only the message that i have is that patent data is kind of a crystal ball into the future you know because when people file patents they are in a stage it gives an indication that the applicant means business okay so this is the only reason why someone will spend so much money so if you any one of you have gone through the process of patenting you would appreciate that it's very expensive right uh, you have to pay a lot of fees to the so patent office fees is not that much but still you have to pay Uh, the consultant the patent agent the patent attorney who is going to draft the application for you uh, follow up with all the office action that is happening and uh, you have to spend hours and hours and hours of your own time so it's very cost intensive if you think about you know even top law firms will t- charge more than 2 lakhs uh, you know maybe the upper limit is not even there uh, for some you know filing one patent okay even a freelancer will charge a good amount of money so it's a cost right for the inventor for the applicant it's a cost so why would somebody spend all that money the only reason why you would spend that is in the hope of extracting future profits via royalties via licensing via outright sale whatever whatever be the case however you want to commercialize or just build your own products and exclude others on the market whatever the motives are uh you know so that is why patents are usually filed at the early phases of the commercialization process so that is why patents can give you you know they can give you an insight into the future of a technology so uh, so this is the reason why patent data is so good 
some of the biggest companies have big patent departments uh, and they have patent researchers who are monitoring other companies. So this intelligence matters a lot. You know, just by looking at the recent patents filed by Apple, many people can predict what their next products might be. So great. Good evening, everyone who's joining now. Uh, so so uh, what have we got? Uh, so basically, European Patent Database, which is uh, one of the best, you can say, uh, free search tool. They have more than 120 million. Th this slide is old. Now they're claiming 120 million patent documents, published documents uh, from about 100 countries. So this is a massive wealth of information that we all have at our fingertips. And all these patents, of, by, by definition, it's a source of technical documentation. It's a source of invention. And this can be exploited by scholars and practitioners, uh, you know, free of charge. So uh, it's a very large amount of data. We've built our own platform, IPgram. Uh, we had three terabytes of data in the cloud, all the text data of 100 million patents, all the uh, metadata of 100 million patents, all the applicant names, so all these things, you know, even with the text, there were no videos or images. We didn't have any, we didn't put any images. Still, it was three terabytes in the in the uh, in the cloud storage so this is the amount of data that there are and the skills that you need for becoming a patent researcher or analyst comes partly from this fact also that you should be able to manage uh, you know data in various forms and shapes so uh, let me see the time how we are doing uh, so let's take this question uh, so i want you know to source some answers from the ch uh, chat. Uh, company A, so I'm making a statement. Okay, so say a hypothesis. Company A is more innovative than company B. Okay, so your the question is, how can we quantitatively argue the above statement? So what are the quantitative metrics where you can say that, okay, this company is more innovative than say some other company? Okay, so let's see the answers. Uh, so, you know, when we get the answers, I think you will appreciate, you know, where I'm getting it once we get the answer to this question. All right, uh, Sukumar Panala, good evening. Uh, Praveen, good evening. Uh, Satyamurthy S, welcome. Great, uh, I think that uh, 64 people are here, that's great. And uh, on day three, uh, I'm quite happy uh, with the audience we have. Uh, we've got more than 1,000 registrations. Uh, many of them actually uh, watch it like in their own time. So yeah, uh, any answers by counting the number of patents the company has? Very good. Professor Vishal Ingole, thank you. Uh, actually, this is the best indicator. It's the easiest indicator. Actually, it's not a best indicator uh, to count the number of patents that one company has against what the other company has. But this is used everywhere for lack of better alternatives. It is easier to just count the number of patents and just say that this company is more innovative than com company B. That may not be the case. <laughs> so uh, quality of patents, well done. OK, Someshwar Rao, on the basis of quality of patents. Citations, well done. Strategic alignment, commercial success, innovation culture and processes, global reach, et cetera. All right, all right, well done. Uh, I am happy uh, you've tried to give precise answers. Um, uh, so citations, definitely, they can be measured in the patent databases. Uh, there are ways to measure it. But some of the other things you have mentioned, alignment or commercialization, culture, these are very difficult to quantify, all these metrics. You can quantify for two companies, which is fine. But you cannot quantify for, say, 3 million companies across the globe. So this is why 
patent filing numbers are simply used because simply it's too much effort for uh, it is simply too much effort by comparing the amount of revenue do you know that even revenue numbers are not easy to avail for all the companies across the world you can get revenue numbers for listed companies very easily uh, but you cannot get revenue numbers for unlisted companies and also to have globally harmonized database that has revenue numbers of all companies across boundaries of the planet it's very very difficult so even revenue and by the way does high revenue mean high innovation uh, maybe profit you know so we don't know if high revenue means high high innovation so uh, at least you would appreciate that this is not an easy question to answer. When you say quantitatively argue, there are obviously many qualitative measures of innovation. But if you want to quantitatively argue whether two companies, you know, any com two companies, you take from country country X to country Y, you take two companies and see, you know, patent data is one of the most harmonized across the world. You know, you at one place, you get database where there is 100 million patents uh, from 100 countries. And you can measure some statistics, you create some statistical indicators and measure company A versus com company B. So this is why patent data is so good for comparing innovation, because you can do it at scale, you can do it across boundaries, and you can do it for large and small firms alike. So you don't need to, because a very small firm, they won't have their revenue numbers anyway. So uh, this is the point I wanted to make, that patents are probably one of the only quantitative measure which gives you a decent scale to compare entities across the planet. So if I look at the field of patent statistics, why it exists, it's simply because they have very few high value patents. Okay, And uh, this is what I wanted to also, uh, you already brought it up in the comments. Somebody said that patent filing numbers if you just count the number of patents, but usually patent filing numbers, they are not a very good indicator. You know, IBM uh, decided around in the late 1990s that they want to be the number one patent filer in the United States. And uh, I think 20, 30 years, since the last 20 years or so, uh, you know, they have the highest patent numbers. But can anyone, can anyone say that they are the most innovative company in the world? Uh, I'm sure it can be argued uh, other, otherwise. Uh, so, patent statistics is a field of research that develops the use of patent information. So, we have a gold mine of information. We have 100 million patents. And we need people who can, from business, management, legal, technical professions, who can make use of this information and to separate the wheat from the chaff. Okay. And this is where patent value indicators come in. And that was also my field of research, like why one value indicator is better than the other and why, you know, uh, uh, why something cannot be measured across boundaries. And uh, so we used to do a lot of statistical research on this. So as you can see, self-explanatory from the uh, from picture in the... So there are a lot of inventions globally, but everyone is not filing a patent for them. Some inventions just use it, uh, but there's no patent for that. And all patents that are filed don't get a grant. Okay, maybe some patents are not so innovative. They're not a novel or inventive or... Uh, you know, uh, so very few are granted. You can say 60-70% is the rate of grant in US, uh, even in India in something like this, but uh, there are many applications that are discarded before even being published. That's why we think the percentages are higher. Uh, but yeah, if you see within granted patents, even very, very few are really top high value. So in today's time, every year, three and a half million patents are filed every year. Out of that, you can just divide the number uh, by maybe 10 or 100. Okay, so most like mo not more than 100,000 patents are high value. Okay, so how do we compare value? I've just put three indicators. Okay, I've not, there are like at least 20 indicators on which uh, we did research on. Uh, so forward citations, it's one of the great ways, you know, if a patent is getting a lot of citations from future patents, it's automatically an indication that a lot of follow-on inventions have learned from that patent. And that gives a very good, good idea. And consistently, statistical research has found that forward citations are a good measure of 
uh, measuring innovation. The second thing is patent family size. Okay, so uh, if you want to become a patent researcher or analyst, these concepts like patent claims, uh, patent families, patent classification, forward citations, opposition, litigation, legal status. Uh, we are going to look at all of these uh, uh, in eSpaceNet in a while. Uh, but these num these concepts should be in the tip of your fingers. You should know them like the back of your hand. Okay, only then you will be able to create uh, you know professional reports out of them. So patent family size is a great uh, indicator of patent value simply because you know, filing foreign patents are expensive. You know, if you decide to go and, you know, uh, protect a patent across Europe, let's say file in the European Patent Office, extend it to many other countries, easily 50,000 US dollars you might spend, you know, if not more. So why would someone spend all that money? Unless they have global markets, nobody would have a high, a, a big family size. So it's a great indicator. If the family size is big, then you know that the market, uh, there's a global market for that invention. And the applicant is very serious about protecting their innovation. And uh, finally, a great indicator of patent value is opposition or litigation. Any kind of challenge in the patent office signifies that the stakes are high. That means there are competitors in the market and the stakes are high. Any litigation that happens, you know, if you think about blockbuster litigations like Apple versus Samsung, you know, why do you think they were fighting? <laughs> because smartphones, you know, is one of the biggest industries right now in the planet. Okay. The commercial interest was so high that it let it spilled across and it, that litigation spilled across so many jurisdictions. It was not just the US, it spilled across many jurisdictions in Europe uh, and so on. So that itself indicates that the patent is very valuable, or at least the field of in which the patent belongs uh, is very valuable. So uh, let's see the workflow of a patent analytics report. Suppose, you know, uh, I will give you some examples also that suppose, you know, if a client comes, you know, what are the possibly the steps that uh, are going to be involved in a patent analytics report or a patent landscape report? The first thing is you have to define the goals with the customer or the team. Okay, you have to sit with them, brainstorm with them, make sure that you are their requirements. So at this time, it's a good idea to keep quiet and listen as much as possible, or at least ask questions. Don't try to show off your knowledge because this is a time if you do not gather the customer requirements very well, you know, you are going to have really big trouble <laughs> when the project is about to conclude because you're going to produce reports that, you know, is not aligned with their expectations. So in the very beginning, your job is to listen and ask questions so that you can get a very good idea about what kind of charts or what kind of story you want to tell with the patent analytics report. Then you have to choose a database. Basically, there are so many patent databases out there. Uh, can it be done with free databases? Most likely not if it comes to professional uh, patent analytics reports. Uh, then you have to see the coverage that maybe some databases ha have better coverage of certain countries. Uh, the quality of the results, do they give some databases give ready-made charts, some very professional charts that you can directly use in your reports? Uh, do they give bulk downloads? Suppose you want like 500,000 patents to download and you want to process them, say, in an Excel file, your own Excel file, create your own charts. So all these are things that you might consider. So, uh, or if you want search-heavy databases, so there are loads of commercial tools out there in the market, uh, which, you know, uh, solve various problems related to uh, building patent analytics reports. And the third very important thing is patent search. So I'm going to share also a bit in, in like the next few minutes why patent search is the most important skill for any patent profession. If you think about any patent profession, uh, you cannot do without being a good, uh, prof before, without being good at patent search. You can find relevant patents, you know, you cannot do that. You know, can you do good prior art search when somebody uh, comes to file a patent? You know, you'll fail at that task. Even patent analytics report, if the search goes wrong, your entire data set is wrong, your, your entire results are wrong. So it's all meaningless. So you need very good understanding of the patent system, which I already mentioned, and you need very good understanding of concepts of patent search.
So I've covered them in many of my webinars. If anyone wants, contact me. I'll share the links with you. Uh, also, uh, one of my course, which is now AICT approved, two-week patent course, I cover all these concepts that I'm talking about, these classification, citations, patent search. So it's the link is actually in the description of the video. You know, feel free, feel free to register it. It's just 199 rupees. And you will get an excellent understanding about the, about the patent system, about the strategies and standard essential patents, uh, which someone asked me in the beginning. Uh, so yeah, so that's patent search. Without a good patent search, uh, you cannot, uh, you know, uh, you cannot proceed. Basically, you know, you will get stuck in all the job function. Basically, not just patent consulting or patent analytics or research. Any other patent job, you will get stuck. You know, if you are not having good understanding of patent search. Finally, when you finalized, so let's say, a search query uh, or a few search queries, then you want to collect and clean the data. Okay, in the beginning, don't start to make any visualizations. If you build visualization, okay, as soon as some people do that, as soon as they get the data, they start getting, trying to get insights, start getting, uh, you know, building charts and so on. But, uh, you know, you are going to go back to the drawing board if you do that. The first thing is to understand your data perfectly. Run statistical measures if it's a huge amount of data. If it's less amount of data, go through it manually check the applicant name. So likely, uh, I'm going to share if we have some time at the end, uh, some challenges in patent uh, analytics. And uh, uh, so uh, with that, keeping that in mind, you need to harmonize the applicant names, you need to, you know, iron out the issues that can arise when you compare suppose Indian patents versus US patents or US patents versus Chinese or European patents. When you compare between jurisdictions, there's always going to be some error coefficient, uh, you know, just because the systems are not the same. So many measures have to be taken uh, so that uh, keeping in mind the system, you are trying to build your reports. And finally, aggregate and visualize. When you've done proper cleaning, when you are sure your search query is correct, you've got multiple meetings with your client at that point, you've you know reiterated uh, you know, what the data looks like and what potentially uh, might be the story. <laughs> That's when your time is there to group the data, aggregate them, visualize it, build space and during all this time you must gain a very good understanding of the business domain either you might be in that business domain yourself to really understand what uh, what might be shown or you need to be smart enough to learn about a new business domain very quickly all right uh, if you have any questions please uh, uh, all right great uh, professor vishal i am going to put your comment here uh, as a testimonial, thank you. Uh, you've already done the two-week patent course. It's very informative. Uh, I highly recommend that before talking about things like patent filing or, you know, go through that course. Because unless you are sensitized to the most important reasons why patenting is happening, why there's a huge demand, what are the strategies of the big companies, the concepts, searching, you cannot go to patent filing. You know, you have never, many people have never seen a patent document. They've never did a single search on Google Patents or eSpaceNet. And they are thinking that my patent will be, uh, you know, granted by the patent office. It will never be. If you've never seen a patent yourself, how will your patent ever be granted by the patent office? It's like, you know, you've never practiced cricket. And now you want to play a... Uh, it's like you've like uh, never played cricket. And now you want to go and play a professional uh, cricket match. Great. Good evening, uh, Manoj Kumar Gildas, sir. Uh, welcome. So let's move on uh, with the presentation. Uh, so this is the kind of information. So this is a kind of I'm giving you a very, like a very quick idea. So just in the first page of a patent application, this is a sample European Patent Office application. <clears throat> you can see there are so many data points. Okay. The first I'm showing is the date of filing. Just with the filing date, you can build so many charts, so many interesting trend lines. You know, just build a trend line, aggregate the data on filing date, and you build a way, build very good charts. Like, is the technology field rising or is it declining? And you know what's going on. Countries where the protection is sought, you'll get the idea of the patent family. Or, you know, you'll get an idea about the global nature of the markets. You know, here you will see the name of the applicant. So in this case, it is, it is Toyota. 
the title and abstract if you read it it was about autonomous driving so so much information you are getting you know again patent holder toyota you just search toyota and you can see what is the patenting trend within toyota what is the patenting trend within autonomous driving so with this kind of data this is how the patent data is extracted uh, available to you in patent databases <clears throat> technical classification a very important concept uh, some of the search, some my i know some colleagues who know so much about patent classification like they will build search queries just with patent classification and you will be surprised that you will not be able to do those patents you know doing some other kind of uh, search query <clears throat> inventors along with their location okay many research fields are there just to see you know one research i saw that showed that how indian and israeli inventors are dominating the us patent scene so they are basically having domicile in us uh, but they are originally from india and israel and uh, so this somebody did a research on migration of or or brain drain you know they kind of pictureize brain drain just by knowing the location of the inventors so uh, i'll give you one exercise uh, i would like you to go to worldwide.espacenet.com the instructions are there on the screen and just enter this patent number so you can see the patent number us 2006 uh, after that it's 026 521 So I put the in the chat. Worldwide. dot espace net. dot com. That's the. So I'm going to also search it with you, but uh, I would like you to tell me the title of the patent. So I. all right so just in the chat somebody write the title of this patent search on espace net the patent number that i have given all you have to do is go to worldwide.espacenet.com and type in this particular number that i have given many of you might be the first patent search uh, and which is fine which is fine so just write in the title uh, so i know that some of you have searched it so we are going to extend we are looking at, going to look at the all the concepts that you need to be familiar with you need to just know these concepts for sure before you get into the field of patent research and analytics so i'm going to share my screen and show you this particular application uh but that would be great if i can see on the comments what is the title of this patent it's an, actually one of the you can say the greatest patent of the 21st century you can say uh it was one of the earliest touch screen patent of apple and uh, it changed the game you know the way we know smartphones after the capacitive touch screen came uh, and the way we knew phones before that time you can say this was the tipping point of the smartphone in they were actually research done by nokia internally and they found out that people don't like touch screens people like to use buttons because the touch screens was very bad pre 2005 2006 the touch screens were very bad you know people didn't like it so they said that no we don't like touch screens and uh, we like <laughs> we like uh, uh, just buttons uh, but this patent came along and change the entire industry so great thank you uh, the correct answers are there in the chat uh, well done i am happy that many of you are writing gestures for touch sensitive input devices that's uh, let's you know let me share my screen uh, all right so here it is gestures so it gives two results probably this number comes in certain way in uh, this other one but it's obvious it's not the same so just just for touch sensitive input devices uh, let's see how it goes so this is the espace net interface it has a lot of information and uh, i would like you today you know i'll not go like to every section but i would like you to look at the complete anatomy of this patent to see what are the concepts out there so there's this button which i can use to hide the results list and i can see more information so you can see 
um, you know, it's a great patent. You know, some of the best drawings I have seen in a patent. Obviously, Apple has good resources. Uh, you know, wonderfully. So it's you know this one drawing. It says very well how the user is going to touch the screen and how it will estimate the point that the user because you know a human finger uh, takes a lot of area in a smartphone. So how they are going to estimate the exact point that they are going to uh, touch the screen. You know, all this is very detailed, all the flow chart of how the process will go. And finally, they're even showing the user how they will use the pinch, uh, the pinch way, the way we zoom in and zoom out images. It may seem very normal today, but somebody very deliberately uh, thought about it. And this patent also was very important because it prevented what is called multi-touch. Okay, so they prevented spurious touches with this patent. So it understood that if a touch screen has been touched in a certain area, then the other area might get touched, but that input should be ignored. So this is also the drawing in which they uh, are showing that. Uh, this zoom in, zoom out feature, uh, like I said, uh, very, very well captured how you can zoom in and zoom out maps. In fact, in this patent, it, they even give an example uh, of how you can zoom out California, <laughs> you know, uh, from from the map of North America uh, and something. So this is how, you know, a person would interact with a touch screen. The earliest way, and you can see all the information here, uh, the applicants, inventors, the IPCNs, the technology, you can click on these and see what they are about. You can see the priority. The first filing in the family was 2004. So this is, and they published these many applications uh, in several countries, uh, uh, many divisional applications. Uh, you can see uh, uh, this abstract and title. So this is what you can see, what is called the bibliographic data. And now I'll give you as a task to go through description, you know, read a little bit about it, see the claims, you know, the claims of a patent. The drawings I've already shown you. The original document can be downloaded. You can click on these three dots over here. Download this PDF. Keep it with you. You know, have it as a reference for what a good patent looks like, and then try to emulate it in case you are. Uh, citations. This patent has got a huge amount of forward citations. I think it cannot be even be loaded. So you can see this is citing documents and this is cited documents. So you can see uh, at least 1,200 or 1,500 patents are there. Who have cited in the future. So patents that came after 2006 have been citing this patent. And this is also cited documents. So the, the references that have been added in this patent. So legal events, you know, go through. You can see these are the legal event quotes. Uh, and uh, these are some of the information that a patent analyst and a patent researcher should know about so that they are able to, you know, consult. You can see the family members. Uh, each and every uh, family member you can see has a different date and you can go and see the re individual legal statuses of different family members by going uh, to this application. So I'm not going to elaborate it. Take this as a homework. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's move back to our slides. So yeah, I hope that uh, it was good. I'm thankful to everyone who answered. Uh, that's great. Uh, so we are going to skip this exercise for lack of time because I want to show you something, some actual landscape reports that we've made. Uh, I want to show you and also show them to you in context. So to summarize the most important technical skills for patent analytics, the first is patent search. You must have very good conceptual and you should also be able to do patent search in hustle mode. Okay, there's also a search, uh, which, you know, it's a term that I use. It's called searching in hustle mode. So patents that you could not find with any search query, but only a person with hustle mode can search for those relevant patents. And usually they come from checking the citations of uh, important patents and so on. Deep knowledge of patent systems. Like I said, you go through the anatomy of that particular patent document. You should know everything that is there, what they mean, what they mean conceptually, and what they mean in a business sense. Uh, you must understand the patent life cycle. Uh, how long it takes in different countries, uh, what are the strategies those life cycle, uh, uh, you know, when patents are in, in, in pendency and so on. Uh, understanding of business domain or ability to quickly learn about new business domains. So this is a very sharp skill that patent researchers and analysts should have. Data cleaning, analytics, and presentation of results. So a lot of things is about 
you know efficiently and uh, efficiently managing data and being able to produce accurate results uh, so 90% of the data analytics work is actually on the back end uh, not very glamorous it's very you know dirty work uh, sometimes even manual work to clean the data and finally once you have the report you should have a good idea how to communicate those results with top management sometimes the top management does not want to know the technical parts you should be able to you know change your narrative change your story depending on uh, depending on who you are presenting the research to uh, so yeah a typical patent landscape analysis uh, i'll show you two patent landscape analysis which i did two are very different they are for different clients and you will see the format and everything is completely different and i'm going to show it to you <clears throat> so typically uh, not always but typically at least you need top patentees which countries are most important what is the patenting trend and what are other technologies out there that solve the same problem all right uh, so let me yeah a lot of use cases are there policy discussions around technologies strategic r and d planning new product development competitor monitoring mergers and acquisition scenarios so these are all the use cases for which companies order these kind of reports we've done a lot of policy related reports we've done even like new product development related so these are mostly prior art search related landscape reports versus policy related are more higher level so uh, i'm going to show you the search skills needed for both these kind of reports and uh, this is just a sample chart uh, immediately with just a simple publication year you can see how a certain field is growing and how the certain technology field is maturing or declining so wind power industry you can see all the innovation happened around max out around 2014 uh, and graphene batteries is exponentially growing uh, which can be a viable alternative to lithium ion batteries uh, which is uh, not very uh, uh, sustainable uh, and uh, and yeah so this is the last slide uh, challenges of patent analytics by the way i also have a free course on patent analytics <laughs> it's uh, just ask me it's also aict approved you get a great aict evaluated certificate with that course uh, and uh, yeah write to me uh, i'll give you my contact details and before i end i want to show you two more patent landscape reports and then we are going to take some questions uh, even we will attend a session for a bit you know uh, so these are my contact details uh, you can take it uh, afterwards also uh, by pausing the video so now i am going to move to uh, <clears throat> to the landscape reports all right so i hope you can see this excel file so this is one landscape report i did it doesn't sound like a landscape report right there's no charts and all <clears throat> but you have to do what the customer needs okay so in this case i realized that the customer is interested in prior art search okay this is like i have redacted the name of the clients <clears throat> so they are interested in prior art search they have certain idea in their mind and they think that it's going to work so basically it is about electric motorcycles where the battery is a heavy component <clears throat> and when the motorcycle is turning that battery can move alongside the turn and help balance the weight of the motorcycle okay so this was the idea of the inventor and we did a patent search and see how well it is document how much information you can consume by scrolling very little you know the link is given here of the patent all the date and title is given here and the text you know i've read all the text of those patents whatever important text is there i am reproducing here i'm not producing the whole document here just the important part and i'm highlighting the most important part and the most important image i'm not putting all the images there are several images in our patent document and i am also giving you the search query the exact search query with which i got this research so that if the client wants to replicate it they can do this so this is actually you can see a very nice patent uh, report uh it's in the form of excel you might think that it's very so here you need very sharp patent search skill because the technology is very narrow the inventor uh, the search is by default te uh, technical on the other hand i will show you a second report where the search needs to be broad it doesn't need to be that technical so again i have redacted the name of the client but this is about the wood products or you know <clears throat> cellulose related products so you can see the first page i am putting very clearly what is the 
goal what is the search strategy so i put the so these are very broad level searches gives like thousands and thousands of results and then you aggregate those data and produce charts okay so here simple statistics i have given up front that this is what you expect and then i produce the charts so i use the business intelligence tool uh, google looker studio <clears throat> uh, and uh, these are the suppose the charts that uh, we created so global 20 players we uh, measured on different metrics so we were discussing in the beginning uh, that sometimes patent count is not a good indicator of uh, patent strength or the core of patent we had several metrics on you know patent quality uh, so yeah these were the different metrics so to see you know which country which company is filing in which country so you see that all in one chart so this is a 120 page report uh, all you know doing very broad and this is for policy discussion so when your search goals are broad you are usually doing something related to strategy and policy and when your search results are supposed to be very narrow you are likely in a very narrow technology domain and you are more interested in prior art and freedom to operate and these kind of searches so uh, with this session uh, i will end the session uh, so with this i'll end the session and uh, quickly you can note my contact details i will bring now uh, dr india sarkar also to the stream and we can jointly answer your questions whatever you have all right so please uh, right now is a very good time to answer questions uh, so one question i'll answer which is uh, basically regarding feedback and certificate uh, so welcome sir welcome to the stream uh, one more time and uh, uh, yeah so question regarding feedback you you will get the feedback from an email so please be patient uh, so yeah so we can stick around maybe for 10 minutes and uh, then we'll conclude the three day workshop i hope you had a good time i'm happy to see 71 people still at the end of the three day workshop so uh, real pleasure to host you and also real pleasure sir to host you too uh, and uh, it's a pleasure. Yeah, I'll remove my contact and I will. All right, a lot of thank you messages. OK, thank you, uh, Piyush, Stanley Abraham, Gunnar Simeon. Great. Uh, any questions regarding patent research, regarding in general about patents or IPR? How will we get certificate? Okay, Dilip, Fan, Kumar, you will get the certificate by filling the feedback form, which you will receive in your email after the session is over. So session is still going on. So obviously you can't immediately get a certificate. So thank you, I mean, Akshi Sharma, thank you. Priya, thank you. Great, welcome. <clears throat> So yeah, definitely, I think, sir, what do you think? Patent uh, and IPR field is growing in India for sure. And uh, li likely this will lead to more jobs. Sure. There is no doubt about it. You know, there was, uh, and there was, today you, if you look at times before, you never used to find uh, this as a preferred choice for to Now it is a yeah. very, one of the choices which people use. And the demand is increasing. Uh, there is still a dearth of a lot of uh, skilled people. So uh, there is uh, air gaps which can be filled up. Yeah. Yeah. I have heard also some patent consulting firms. They have said that, you know, people are not there. They have so much work and they're not getting the enough talent and skill. See, so, well, you know, yeah. One more thing I want to add here is, you know, like when in the, in the, uh, beginning of the century, we had that, you know, Y2K bubble and everybody want, thought that, you know, doing an IT course will change their life. It did change their life. Okay, so there is a feeling among many people who are there that, that there is a lot of future in, uh, in IP and IPR uh, where they are trying to jump into this. Okay, and they are, they are only touching the surface. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
it is acquisition of the skills which will take you to the top yeah and uh, see this is one field where one needs to be abreast every day because you know the rules change the statutes change there are amendments and mm-hmm. it is not it is not a very territorial thing that what's happening in india now you might be interested what's happening in korea japan australia so it, mm-hmm. it's a constant learning process and there is there is a tremendous dearth of good people we have a lot of people who are in this field okay. yeah yeah but, yeah in india I definitely you know you go to ip conferences there are not too many good people yeah so yeah. Uh, you have to see just attending a workshop like this or something is not enough you have to go much more mm. beyond actually you need to keep learning you can't learn like all things in two weeks right you need to like okay small small nuggets you keep learning and that's actually what sir we are doing at turn up innovations also that we are not saying that this course is over so now you know everything so you take the certificate and that's it so you basically learn for several people in our email list they are there for four years they're doing all these sessions and everything so it's a journey this kind of a learning uh all right so professor vishal ingole sir i have an idea about the business module uh what i do will i go for patent or copyright uh sir maybe you can take this uh, i think well see you, than... when you say you have a business module it's i hope it is i'm assuming it is it is a process with several unit steps okay which leads to a business outcome now if you say it's a business algorithm if you say it is a business method then many patent offices like india europe they do not allow patents on business methods it is in the exclusion list <clears throat> some countries allow but it is how you represent it if you can convert it yeah. to a process a process of getting a certain output that output could be you know as defined by your uh, your needs you can definitely have a have a process patent and if you are using yeah. too much of it into this so if this is a process which involves uh, you know automation or you know um, other it methods then you can think of two ways you can you can classify it as a it as a system or a method mm-hmm. where your module is itself a system so you can write system claims and get a system patent or you can also write a, a method uh, you know and go for a method claim okay, so yeah. it's very much possible if there are non technical things to protect that is codes and all you can go for a copyright mm-hmm. okay, but the technical things will always go with patents yeah so then maybe you can take this one also uh, i think uh, you know i have limited industry experience actually honestly you know sir is better to answer this soft skills apart from technical skills required for ip searcher and analyst it is see the soft skill if you say it is uh, see one thing is you know an eye for detail okay and you know time sometimes if you are if you are in carrying out a search you might land up with your first search your first cut may give you you know thousands of patents mm-hmm. which which is which is not exactly you want your interest is in those 20 patents so mm-hmm. there there should be a process of filtration to bring it down okay so the selection of proper syntax in the search okay see a search done by five people you'll find that one of them does the best okay the other comes gives the same result in five days it is because of the eye to, uh, you know eye for detail and the proper search string or syntax mm-hmm. with practice your your idea of creating those search strings and syntax improves okay it's not that the first day it's going to be a great it can be the great but you know uh, with time with more and more work uh, it it definitely improves Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the knowledge of the domain. <laughs> knowledge of the domain. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you ask an aeronautical engineer to do a search on an anti-diabetic drug, he might uh, struggle. Yeah. Unless he picks him in the background of that area. So the domain knowledge is another um, uh, very, yeah. very crucial thing. Either you have yeah. it or you acquire it. In analytics, in analytics, we say that the number one analytic skill is actually domain knowledge. <laughs> Nothing to do with the data uh, and the uh, analytics part. So, okay, uh, M. Someshwar Rao, maybe the final question, sir, we can take this. Uh, how much fees the Indian government charge for patent approval and how much an agent in India usually charge on an average? Uh, so, do you want to take this? Uh, See, this, this is a broad range. See, when you go for the government charges, these are statutory fees. They are fixed by the government. Okay. Now, what do you say at the time of filing? You file. You have to pay the filing fee. If you have, if you exceed the number of pages or the number of claims, you have to mm -hmm. pay for a claim fee for each, and then you have to make a request for examination where you pay a fee for that. Once it is granted, you have to pay something which is known as the, or you will receive something which is known as the notice of allowance. You have to pay the grant fee or the issue fee. And then to keep the patent alive for 20 years, you need to pay a maintenance or a renewal fee every year. Now, these are fixed. Okay. Now, they, these are fixed. There are, the government is encouraging a lot in the sense that if you are a startup or you are coming from an MSME background or if you are an individual inventor, Okay, not a uh, not a legal entity like a company, you get more than fifty percent discount in the government fees. That's one part. Okay, that and that cannot that cannot change because the fees are fixed for everybody. What can mm -hmm. change is how much the patent agent or the patent attorney and the patent lawyer takes. Now there is a, this is a very very broad scheme. Okay, it is like you know you might have seen in your life that when there is uh, when you go to the doctor in your lane, he charges a fee. When you go to a big hospital, he charges another fee. When you go to a bigger corporate hospital, he charges you another fee. And it, it's basically the fee is based on his brand name and brand value, brand or the organization or the firm in which he is attached. Okay, so it varies. It varies. Okay, mm -hmm. now. Uh, there are many law firms who uh, who would like to give startups and individual inventors a preferred fee. Hmm. Uh, but there are the big big ones, you know, they treat everybody in the same manner. Uh, so there is a there is a broad so if you look at it just to file a patent, you know, it can be anything from uh, 20, 25,000 to 2 lakhs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about answer the question. Indian patent only. Okay. Yeah. It will change because uh -huh. in the US, the uh, statutory fees there are much higher. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, Piyush Yadav. Uh, I actually didn't understand your question perfectly. What is the most essential part of technology for a legal person? Uh, so, do you understand this? Some Everything is essential. Every, probably he is trying to say that Biyush is trying to say what is the USP of the technology. That is going to vary, but most essential part is uh, I would say every part is essential because if you remove that part, the technology doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, Someshwar, uh, I think uh, I think Someshwar, based on the questions he has asked, uh, I feel that he himself should be able to answer this question. Uh, since patent is territorial based, can there be same patent submitted by two different persons or applicants in two different territories? The answer is yes, you can. Two different people can always find why two. N number of people can find the same invention in same way uh, as in the form of a patent application in different countries. But the point is, will it get granted? No, it's prior art. <laughs> it becomes prior art. Whoever filed the first in whichever country, in whichever jurisdiction, 
that will be mm -hmm. considered as the first disclosure all are, and it will act as a prior act for others so if you say can if your question is modified that can a patent be granted answer is no can a patent be applied definitely it can be applied mm -hmm. yeah. because you know, there is no no there is no prerequisite for filing a patent you just fill up form one in triplicate and uh, with a copy of your patent uh, file it or nowadays you don't have to do that also because uh, you can do everything online Mm -hmm. Amazing. So uh, with this, uh, sir, uh, let's wrap up the uh, workshop. Uh, really, really appreciate, sir, your time. And uh, I also think the audience did great justice to, uh, you know, uh, our talks. So very, very relevant questions. Thank you for that. And I'm happy to see the interest. You know, uh, many people have registered uh, and they have shown interest. And uh, I hope there have been uh, really covered for you some even something small that you've taken uh, which will be useful in your career for uh, after this three day uh, career in intellectual property rights workshop uh, thanks a lot everybody uh, thank you sir uh, if you want to sir any last words uh, after that thank you very much it was wonderful interacting with all of you i hope to see most of you as you know the next generation patent professional and interact much further and at least you know bounce uh, against each other in different serious scenarios of in the patent ecosystem or the ipr ecosystem okay good luck thank you have a wonderful evening thank you good evening everyone bye bye